Now let's suggest now and move on to the ASU federal government on pass. The Academic Staff Union of University ASU has filed an appeal challenging the ruling of Justice Poli Kapaman of the National Industrial Court, Abuja, which ordered the lecturers to call off their seven-month-old strike and return to the classrooms. Counsel to the ASU, Mr. Femi Falano, based their appeal on 14 grounds. The motion is seeking two reliefs, which are a leave to file the appeal postal to section 243 of the constitution that requires a party to seek a leave of court or to appeal the judgment or ruling of the national industrial court and also seeking for a stay of execution of the orders of the court pending the hearing and the termination of the appeal this uh the second actually is perhaps a normal uh, procedure if you're going on appeal. Now, seeking a stay of ex execution, meet, which means that uh, praying the court to uh, halt on that uh, execution of the judgment earlier uh, pronounced. Earlier on China's television, we heard from uh, the council to us so tonight. We'll be hearing from the council to the federal government. Senator Itainang, he joins us live from Uyo in Akwaibom State. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. I'm um, speaking to you as a lawyer to federal government tonight. First and foremost, um, let's begin this conversation uh, from the position of the ASU. We are, I mean, on the day of the judgment, uh, ASU president was on this program, and he believes that it was unfair for the federal government to go in the manner in which they went. Negotiations are going on, and the federal government ran to court. ASU believes that the federal government is not sincere. Thank you very much. The government is not sincere. Comments on the 14th of February. Thank you very much for the government is not sincere. Comments from the 14th of February. Thank you very much for the government is not sincere. Comments from the 14th of February. Thank you very much for the government. To the uh, to August, and it would be to August and September. They had engaged at the stage of the uh, Minister of Education, the stage of the Minister of Labour, the stage of the. Um, uh, at the uh, National Universities Commission, I uh, engaged with the uh, conference of vice chancellors, conference of chancellors, and, and uh, body of pro chancellors. It's engaged with sev several serious Nigerians have engaged, and Nigerian students have lost seven months. And it would be unreasonable if the federal government considered that it would not do anything about this. It was on the basis of this that the Honourable Minister of Labour, His Excellency Chris Mwabweze Ngige considered it appropriate, invoking the provisions of Section 17 and 18 of the Trade Dispute Act, which authorizes him that when negotiations has collapsed and he has an adequate time is being given, and he should, that he should refer the matter to the National Industrial Court for determination. And the Honorable Minister of Labor the, referred two, three questions to the, to the uh, National Industrial Court by way of filing a referral before the court. And that was on the 12th of, um, that was on the 8th of September. On the 12th of September, we were in court, or that about, and we presented the matters. The Honorable Court presented, presided over by His Lordship Honorable Justice, Haman Polycap, directed that we should file, that the party should file a affidavit of fact. And we had to file a affidavit of fact, fleshing it with uh, our application. We had earlier uh, uh, filed an application for interlocutory injunction. And so the question that the Honorable Minister of uh, Trade has raised, as authorized by the uh, uh, Section 17 and 18 of the Trade Disputes Act, and further uh, strengthened by the Trade Disputes Essential Services Act, are for the court to determine whether, in view of Section 43 of the Trade Dispute Act, which says that when, first, when says that when the uh, workers are on strike, that they shall not be paid, whether the Academic Staff Union of Nigeria are entitled to be paid salary for the period which they did not work and when they were on strike. Because ASU is saying that Part of the, 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 the almost every other thing having been complied with, that the federal government has to pay them for the period within which the, during which they were on strike. And Section 43 of the Trade Dispute Act says that 
the, any person on strike shall not be paid during the period of the strike. So the, the Honorable Minister referred this to the uh, uh, National Industrial Court. And we filed a affidavit of fact, and the respondent, uh, led by um, the, 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 the Leonard Council, um, Femi Falana SAN, filed, and, and his team, uh, filed uh, a response. And um, uh, uh, Let me jump in quickly, Senator. And I'd like to ask you, would you say that the negotiation has fallen apart before you went yes, to court? Nego yes, nego yes, negotiation, yes had negotiation had broken down and irretrievably, and the minister had to take the steps that are directed and mandated by the uh, Trade Disputes Act. The academic moment, because we need, I need to ask you these very quick questions so that we can lay premise uh, upon this, because this is a matter of public interest. And when this kind of thing happens, uh, and when government is involved, uh, what uh, an, uh, uh, an average person will think is that the government may pander to the interests of the average person that is re on the receiving end in this case. So we'd like to educate Nigerians and help uh, the, sy the system that is, being, uh, uh, that, that is feeling this heat. Now, the big question here is the last meeting of President Muhammad Buhari and the pro-chancellor what the president said was, I will consult uh, wider and I will get back to you. Does that sound like a negotiation that has broken down? That is, that Mr. is Mr. President speaking. And that is Mr. President speaking. The Honorable Minister is, is in touch and is doing everything in consultation with all the tiers of government and all appropriate proper persons. For now, the, we are bound by the ruling of the National Industrial Court, which has granted interlocutory injunction restraining the strike. And um, we've just heard on air, but we've not been served with any of the processes. The, uh, our team, uh, led by uh, the JUK Igwe, SAN, Kasali SAN, from the attorney office of the Attorney General, my humble serve and our team have not been served with any of those processes. But where we are is that yesterday we were served with all the processes and we have, this judgment has been executed. The judgment, we were served with the, with the court order. Today, we've gotten the court uh, order. I'd like to out of the legal issues. So let's focus on what Nigerians can relate uh, with. But I'd like you to clarify oh, this. Today, now, do you see, uh, Senator, uh, in the same light which Mr. Falana sees the National Industrial Court? Mr. Falana had debated and argued that the industrial court is an appellate court, which after uh, a dispute from the, the arbitration process and things, and there is a sack or uh, a suspension or, uh, of workers, then the em workers can take the employers to court, that the arbitration process was still on. It has not gotten to the point of the national industrial court having the jurisdiction or the locals to sit on this matter. Do you think that in the National Industrial Court, based on the procedure of law that set it up, has the jurisdiction to answer or to hear this matter? Yeah. Yeah. The, National Industrial the National Industrial Court is, is established by the Constitution. That's number one. Number two, this, the matter that, uh, that the Learned Silk has raised are the matters which are pending adjudication in the substantive matter. One. And again, His Lordship, the Honorable Judge that granted the order had said that matters of a substantive nature cannot be touched upon so deeply at the, at the stage of interlocutory application so that it will not be like determining the matter in advance. So what, is, what, what the Leonard uh, Silk has referred to are pending the uh, determination at the court. Where we are now is that there is an interlocutory injunction which must be complied with on our part We've ensured that today the, the uh, order has been forwarded by the uh, Honorable Minister of Labor yesterday to the Minister of um, uh, uh, Education 
And the Honorable Minister of Labour had requested that, had intimated that the universities, door, the doors of the university has to be thrown open, the students have to be called back to work, that members of the academic staff have to be made to return, had to return to school, and that all activities in all the universities has to be commenced immediately. Now, the Honorable Minister of Education has had been one, here. One and um, how do you think we could be seen uh, in the eyes of the world? Does the government of the day, would it be perceived as a serious government that would allow students to stay at home since February this year and um, uh, allow this strike action to, to linger uh, a negotiation that has preceded this government, of course. Part of this uh, agreement are being obligations have been met by previous government. Would you say that it is, uh, is uh, the inability of the government to meet its own part of the demand? Or will, would you say that the Nigerian government does not have the money to be able to meet ASU's demands? First, it is the interest of the students and, their, and the parents that are the national interest upon which the minister went to court. And it is upon the interest of the students who have been made and denied opportunity of completing their school, school in time uh, that, has, that was the basis of the judgment. In fact, thank God you have the ruling of the court. His lordship specifically mentioned that in the interest of the students, the innocent students, is is wears heavier, and that is why he has ordered an uh, injunction asking that student, I mean the teachers return to classes and the schools be opened. So the national interest is what the federal government is working on. Senator, I'm asking on the side of government, how does this government, how do you think or hope that this government could be perceived that it allows students to stay at home for over seven months since February, is it that they do not have the money? Would this government be perceived as a serious government that will allow our education sector to be left in this state? The government is a very serious government. And that is why it followed ASU. Even when it was, ASU was, uh, had gone beyond the normal limits that, academics, that a trade union should. ASU, academic staff union have behaved as if it were a political party. Academic Staff Union has behaved as if it were a government. Academic Staff Union has behaved as if it is no more a trade union. Academic members of, members of the Academic Staff Union have behaved as if they are no more employees. They have behaved as if they are an institution, a state. So the federal government has tolerated ASU for almost too long. That is why you are seeing a situation where other, other unions are springing up in the universities, seeking to be registered. And I want to say, I, I apologize, I hope this is, the, I'm not sitting my brief as counsel in this matter. Let academic members of the academic staff union go back and look at its back and see whether they still have the support of 95% of the followership of their members. 95% is only about 3 to 5% of their members that are following them. And of course, if the, the Minister of Labor has taken every step that the law allows. Now, the law does not allow the federal government has not refused, yes, sir. That the Nigerian government does not have the money to meet ASU's demands. What are the demands of ASU? One, it is that the university, part of the demand is that the federal government should intervene in the bill in the National Assembly to be passed. It is not the duty of the executive to interfere in the legislative work. It is the, bad, it is the duty of any person who has a bill in the legislature to go and present your case before the legislature, and if the legislature considers it appropriate, they will pass. Part of the other one is that the university should be funded. The federal government has funded the university to the extent that it, has, it, it is able to fund. The other one is that they should be paid salary for the period that they were on strike. The federal government is not refusing to pay. The federal government is saying it's bound not to pay. And if the federal government pays for the period within which they were, during which they were on strike, the federal government would be disobeying the law, and that is an offense. The federal government is saying, look, we have to obey the law, section 43 of the Trade Disputes Act, and other provisions, says, section 43.1, that any person who proceeds on strike shall, and I repeat the word shall, 
not be paid during the period of the strike. And it goes on to say in paragraph 2 that for the period of counting the continuance of the employment of that person, the period during which he is on strike shall not be paid. So the federal government is bound by law, and again bound by law, not to pay. But at the same time, this is a matter that is pending the, before the court, so we are not uh, going to draw a conclusion because we are still asking the court. This is the matter that um, the Honorable Minister of Labor has referred to. That's because we are totally out of time tonight. But we must sincerely thank you, Senator Itayanang, one of the lawyers to federal government in the case between federal government and the university lecturers. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us tonight. Thank you very much. We're getting reactions from the Minister of Labor, Senator Chris Ingige, who's speaking uh, in New York. He's telling us to obey the court ruling first. The negotiations will continue. The Minister of Labor and Employment has advised the university lecturers to obey the National Industrial Court ruling and call off its ongoing nationwide strike while negotiation is ongoing. You get details of that on China's television news bulletin, which will come on top of the hour. Thank Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for watching tonight. I'm Sean Kimali. I'll see you at 8 p.m. on Sunday. Bye for now.